Do you love both tech and animals, and you're curious how you can combine your interests into one career? I'm Daniel, I'm a bioinformatics and molecular biology researcher at the largest biomedical research institute in the world. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can get into bioinformatics for free. This video is gonna walk through the pathway that I would take if I had zero dollars and I wanted to get to where I am now. Starting off, I highly recommend starting with one course called CS50X. This is a fantastic free, like all the other content in this video, free online course taught by Harvard University professor David Malin. He's a fantastic teacher. He's excited to teach you the introductory concepts in computer science. I did this course, worked through the whole thing. I actually have a playlist about it. And really, it got me more interested in computer science and then eventually bioinformatics. This course does a really good job of starting from the basics. You get to make a game the first week in Scratch or a video if you want, and then move on to other projects that focus on data structures, algorithms, syntax, and the whole idea of programming languages. It's a fantastic course taught by a really good professor. I actually met Professor Malin at Washington DC. I was at a computer science conference and he was great guy. So I highly recommend starting there. I think it's really good to transition then to get some biology knowledge because if you want to do bi bioinformatics, you really do need both strong computational skills and strong biological knowledge. And there are a lot of free ways to do that. I highly recommend after CS50 going to crash courses, biology playlist and watching all the videos because A, they're super high quality, B, they're really interesting and fun to watch because you have to have fun during this process. And then three, they're taught by a really good professor. So this is this playlist is taught by Dr. Sammy Ramsey. He is an entomologist and he's a really charismatic person. So I think the videos come together really well. So watch through that whole playlist to get some of the fundamentals of biology. You'll pick up way more biology along the pathway that I'm gonna line out as well, but that's a really good playlist, so go through that after CS50. After the crash course biology playlist, you're gonna transition back to the computational side, and you're gonna take two more CS50 Harvard courses. One is CS50 Python, the other is CS50 R. They're both great and it's up to you which one you wanna do first. If it was me, I would do the Python one first. I think Python is the easiest programming language to learn, but it's still highly powerful. It's general programming. So you can do really anything you want in Python. And then I would go to R next, but it's up to you. Like for me in real life, I actually started with R and then years later learned Python and that worked out fine for me. So it's up to you which one you do. And then after that, you wanna move on to more of a intermediate to advanced level free course. Again, these are all free. This one is gonna be Carnegie Mellon University's computational biology course. And it's actually a course that's on a professor's webpage and it's called Great Ideas in Computational Biology. The professor here is named Philip Kampau and he's done a really good job of going through a number of different topics. So this is definitely not introductory level. You do have to know some biology and some computational things to go through this. And it might be stretching, but it's definitely worth going through the course. And as many projects as you can do for this course that are assignments that you can choose to do or not will help you a ton for sure. After that, I would move on to Rosalind dot info. This is actually going to be a really nice way of going through specific techniques for different bioinformatics problems. So whereas the Great Ideas in Computational Biology is going to give you a nice broad overview of computational biology with a lot of different concepts, Rosalind.info is going to focus on using Python to solve bioinformatics problems. So this is really gonna be a lot of practice things and you're gonna get some concepts down as well for sure, but this is really gonna be 
using R or sorry, using Python to go through a bunch of practice problems. Highly useful, highly helpful. And then after all those things, it's really going to be up to you to start being a bioinformatician and do your own projects. Even just getting one project on your portfolio can help you really start making strides to getting a career in bioinformatics. And you have so much, so much flexibility for what you want to focus on. Start downloading genomes from the UC Santa Cruz genome browser website, and then just start visualizing them, analyzing them, looking for where the same gene is and related species, and then just go from there. You can follow the concepts that are laid out in the previous courses you've taken and try to analyze something. If you ever find something of interest, just go down that rabbit hole and importantly, look at the literature on that gene. Of course, later down the line, when you're a legit bioinformatician, you're gonna have mentors and other people like your PI who are gonna walk you through the whole process, of course. But struggling through things on your own, I think is in a lot of ways the best way to learn, at least at this level, and just try stuff out. And I hope this is a really helpful pathway for you as you're considering getting started in bioinformatics for free. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know any questions you have and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.